Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the reserve list spikes and what you should be doing or not doing during this buyout period. Essentially, this is being promoted by people who want to sell you their reserve list cards, as is everything, right? I'm not going to name names, but uh, there is a bunch of people saying buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that, and I typically don't do that anymore especially on a reserve list card because the ecosystem is quite fragile. Now, are these cards amazing? They're, they are okay when you compare it to the power level of today's cards, but is this card really worth $500 and did someone really buy this card out? Great card. Uh, I have nothing against this card. I think it's a decent card, but a few years ago, it was $50, now it's $500. And people have told me this card is actually not one black, it is two and a black, which makes this horrendously wor it's horrendous. Two and a black, you get a 1-1 one -one that grows slightly bigger when we have Death Shadow, and it's $75. So... Things are going poorly on the reserve list front, and it's because Wizard of Coast cannot reprint cards. So this will be the only card like it. Unless they say, hmm, I like the ability. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new card, and the new card will be, uh, instead of two in a black, it'll be one in a black, and it'll do exactly the same thing. And that card still would maybe or maybe not see play in standard, depending on how much creature removal there is. That is my solution to the reserve list card. Okay, look at Singing Tree. We'll name it Dancing Tree. And instead of three and a green, we'll make it two and a green. Or one and a, no, I guess one and a green would be too good. Two and a green. And we'll make it legendary. And we'll call it Summon Dancing Tree. So equivalents kind of do exist, but I think they have to be like super obvious, right? Hey, do you want a singing tree or do you want a dancing tree that costs one less? And people are like, oh, okay, I want the dancing tree. Overall, these cards are underpowered, they are illogical, and they're not very good. But just because they are on the reserve list means for a singing tree, somebody's going to pay $190. I don't know who this person is. Or if this person even exists, but the price is 190 now, and that's what people are trying to charge. It's all about greedy people trying to make money from Magic the Gathering. Next, uh, we have this card. Let's read what it does. Two double white. Any player with planes under his or her control gains one life point during upkeep. I'm assuming it means your upkeep, not everyone's upkeep. Maybe, no, I mean, it means everyone's upkeep. It costs four. Is this really a four dollar card? I could see it as a two dollar kind of, oh, it's a beautiful artwork. I want one copy of it. But is this really a card that someone's going to go out and buy all of them and say, hmm, I'm going to buy all of this card and I hope one day it'll be extremely valuable? It's just so surprising to me some of the cards that have gone up in price are just some of the worst cards i've ever seen in my life i've been playing magic in beta and beta you know savannah lion's good you know it's two one for one it's very simple to understand sarah angel's always good the vampire is always good fallen angel is kind of creative but i when i saw storm seeker which is a card i have played with while it was in standard we didn't call it standard back in the day i don't know what it was but it wasn't standard and the sense that it is today. Free and a green, instant, it deals one damage to opponent for each card in his or her hand. Maybe it's good for those really greedy decks in the ED8s, but is it $3 good? You're paying four. Is I mean, could we just make something called Rain Seeker and then it costs two and a green? and it does the same thing, would that card, card even see play in EDH or Standard? Probably not. So a lot of these prices is due to artificial inflation. People say, oh, you know, hey, maybe they're just collectors who really want to collect. Yeah, I think they're, that's true. 
But I think if you're a collector, you don't put the stuff on the market for a higher price. You just keep it and you're just like, okay, I'm going to collect it. I like it. And I don't, uh, my greatest mistake was selling my collection of Stoneforge Mystics when they spiked. I made money and I sold them all to Strike Zone, but I do regret doing it because it's impossible for me to rebuild a collection like that again because I purchased them when they were very cheap. That's why I'm holding on to my Filea collection. I'm holding on to it and just hoping that uh, in, a, in the next video this week, I'm going to make a video and I can prove to you I bought Filea's at $2.00. And then three dollars for, and then eventually I gave up around four fifty one. That is the price I decided it was too much. Collectors are not the ones reselling it and flipping it for a quick dollar. So what's happening is somebody's buying all of this. And once they receive all of it, then they put the moat on for double the price. They're flipping it. They have no respect for collecting. They're just trying to flip it. That's why you see these spikes. These spikes are not naturally people are trying to collect it and add it to their collection. It's someone's trying to flip it. Like, it's awful, I think. And I, I'm against it. I'm against the buyouts. And you might think that's very hypocritical. But there's a difference between buying out and trying to flip something and then buying a few copies or more copies in a very slow drip. So when I was buying the Filios, I kept buying them for... I want to say a year and they never went up in price and I didn't want them to go up in price because that meant I knew as soon as they went up in price, I would have to stop buying them, which is what happened, unfortunately. And I would pick a new card and the new card was Malera and then Malera went up in price and I was like, oh man, well, <laughs> what do I have left? There's a card I'm looking at very carefully right now. Um, I'm not entirely sure if it's a good card. It's, its power level is weak and it's not as obvious. Okay, let's take a look at this. Out of Spawn. Let's read what it does. Four do triple blue. I think it's a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, out of Spawn cannot block, be blocked by red creatures. Sacrifice one of your islands during your upkeep or it deals six damage to you and is buried. I'm pretty sure it is a 6-6. Six, six. So it costs seven. Why is this card seven dollars? Like... And look at the artwork. Is anyone really collecting this card in terms of, oh, I love this card. I'm going to collect it. Norwales I can get because Norwales is a cute Norwale and it kind of makes sense. But this one, I mean, look at the artwork. It's Who's collecting this? <laughs> like, you know, who's collecting? The only reason it's $7 is it's from the Legends. And as we all know from recent Spikes, Legend cards are quite valuable, no matter how bad they are. I'm going to show you the worst card ever and the price on this card. It is almost 9 bucks. It is 5 in double black. Look at the artwork. It's, in my opinion, it's called Mode Demon, so already we have a problem. And it is Summon Mode Demon. It is a 6-6 six, six for 7. When Mode Demon is bought into play, controller must sacrifice 2 swamps or Mode Demon is buried. Does anyone think this card is good? Why is it more valuable than every card in standard, pretty much? It's valuable than more than 99% of the cards in standard. It's worth as much as the most played cards in standard right now. Ugh. Anyway, that's it, guys. Leave me a comment below. Bye, guys.